Hello and welcome to another episode of Your Queer Story. We are your hosts. I'm the overgrown weeds that have taken over your entire yard, Paul Hobbs. And I am the classy and stylish Evan Jones. And we're so happy to have you back today. Welcome back. Happy. Uh, today is a happy day in queer history. Yeah, it's like it really nominated in my mind yeah. for like one of the most queer historical days in history. It is. It is at least, it definitely in American history. In American history, mean? that's fair. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We can't forget that we have listeners in other parts of the world. Hello to you all. We actually are going to be having a month devoted to our international listeners coming up. Yeah. So reach out if there's anything specific you want covered. We have a lot of listeners in Germany, the UK, Australians just hopped on the your I, queer story I, I, board. Yeah, so. If you want like an episode on gay kangaroos or something, let us know. I don't, <laughs> I don't really know much about Australia, but we'll figure it out. Gay kangaroos. <laughs> there's gay definitely gay kangaroos. There's gay everything. There's not gay everything. Yes, there is. There's a lot of gay stuff. There's definitely. All right, whatever. Tweet us if there's gay kangaroos. I'm going to find them for you. I'm good. I hope that there are gay kangaroos. I hope it. I do. Um, do, do, but do dad kangaroos have the pouch or is that only mom kangaroos? I think the mom. Because how did the dad kangaroos adopt the baby kangaroos? Like, what? How did they carry them? Well, if they're gay, they don't have babies. I. They can adopt. Don't be discriminatory. I don't know that animals adopt. Animals adopt all the time. At least I don't know. That is a thing. That is if a gay thing. kangaroos adopt and the males have pouches to carry the adopted gay babies, and please let us know. Very important <laughs> question. It's very specific, and it's very important. We will not be able to sleep. But it. no, listen though. These are the kind of things that like I'm laying in bed with David watching TV, and I like glance over, and he will Google these type of questions on his phone, like very specific, targeted <laughs> questions that you're like. What are you doing? Like, how many legs does a caterpillar have? Like, literally shit like that. And I'm like, what? I'm like, you'd be great at trivia. You probably know, like, yeah, everything. All those random things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, some people just they want... That's the kind of stuff that Samantha wants to know. She wants to know these very specific, ridiculous questions. And no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But we can't do anything until she figures it out. Yep, that, yeah. that's literally that. Like, I'm literally in the middle of anything, and he's just like, hang on, I really need to know this. Yeah, well, the worst is when we're, like, starting to initiate sex, and all of a sudden, Samantha decides to ask me some stupid question, like, do you think they gay, there are gay kangaroos with dads that have pouches? Like, that would be the kind of question <laughs> that she would ask me as I'm starting to get in the mood, and then she gets frustrated at me because I'm no longer sexually aroused, but I don't know how I'm supposed to push through that. I don't know. Is there a counselor out there that can help us? I don't know. Maybe there is. Wait, yeah. something's wrong. How is my mic not on? Now it is. How is my mic not on? Did you yep, turn, we're back. Did you we're turn back. my we're microphone back. on? I don't know what you guys heard. You guys probably missed some of the greatest banter we ever had because Paul deliberately turned my microphone off. No, apparently He's, Evan touched something because no. I've oh, now, I touched something. I, I didn't touch anything. I set this thing up to be good to go where it never needed to be touched for anything and then all of a sudden that's turned down. I don't touch anything and he deliberately muted me because he wants it to be the Paul Hobbs show. The Paul Hobbs. No, listen, if it was the Paul Hobbs show, it'd be very boring because I don't research anything. So it'd just be like, <laughs> <laughs> Here's my Just, opinion of the week. <laughs> Paul scrolling through Wikipedia and he's like, and uh, and pronouncing words wrong as he goes. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I was actually told that. My word pronunciation. I saw you just turn yeah, me down again. You're, you're starting to clip now. Oh, no. My word pronunciation is pretty funny. A lot of people like that. Oh, do they? And I actually, the funny thing is I don't try to do it. I really try to say every word. I try really hard. And then everybody's like, oh my God, you're hilarious. And I'm like, I'm sorry. that. Wow. And I work so hard <laughs> and I listen to words, which is really sad because I constantly, I still pronounce things wrong. And I listen, folks. I really do. Oh my God. The, in the last episode, Burger Roy. So we literally, <sighs> we spent like 10 minutes listening to it. And I was like, I know we're going to fuck this up. And then like, no, as soon as can't. it comes up in the script, I'm like, Yep, Burgoyce. 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 I still don't know what it means. Still don't know what it is. And I did try. I tried, but that's my problem. I just, I can't retain it in my brain. Samantha wanted me to learn ASL with her. And I was like, I think that's fantastic. Wonderful. There's no way I'm going to remember anything. I can't remember anything from my German a, B, classes. C, D, no, nothing. E. I know I some. I took piano for like 10 fucking years and I can't play anything on the piano. To it be fair, you're you were actually bad at everything you went to school for. Wow, that's rude. Um, I was fantastic you, at history. You had to take my teacher called me out and made me an example for the class for history. And also my English teacher called well, me out. You were also telling them like, yes, and in 2070, 
BC, mm-hmm. God destroyed Sodom. But that you was know a what? That's what hey, that's the history that I was given. That's the history that I remembered. So fuck you, bitch. The, but besides history, every other class, let me tell you. Cooking, trash. Okay, yes. Cooking was sewing, bad. Sewing, trash. I refused to go to sewing. Um, any other house thing? Trash. <laughs> yes. Well, my household, uh, we had a lot of arts and crafts. Like, they were homemaking classes. And no, I was not good at the homemaking classes. I, I did not want to do the homemaking classes. <laughs> I also wasn't very good at math. I get that. Wasn't good at, the, at um, other languages. I, I understand that. Um, Calling Evan out right here, left and right. <laughs> that's fine. But I, I exceeded expectations when it came to history and i exceeded expectations when it came to english that's good because i was like a c student in english if you couldn't (laughs) tell from anything i ever do that's why anytime any okay so i make the twitter post right because they're like 120 characters and i'm like i can shorten everything it's great but when we post our facebook stuff i'm like evan you have to make the facebook post because otherwise people like it needs to be like good so you have to make it (laughs) yep that yep that's how it works that's why it works that's why we balance each other out exactly i also sucked at music I just, I don't, there's a whole side of my brain that doesn't work. (laughs) It doesn't work. Anyways, we should get into it today because we've got a lot to cover and we have a lot to do today. We have, we're recording a mini episode after this. With the wonderful Vima. We know you've missed her. Vima Manfredo. She's coming back and she's going to talk, we're just going to be a mini episode that's talking about, um, you know, being an ally to our queer friends of color, queer people of color. So, um, yeah, so you can check that out. Giving you a little extra content this month because next month is going to be not as serious. I feel like we did, we've done a lot of really serious Yeah, this topics. month was very heavy. It was yeah. like very serious, more recent and things that currently are influencing us versus, you know, historical figures who really influenced things that came. Yeah, yeah. And it was just heavy stuff in general. I mean, mm-hmm. Stonewall and God, the, the Pink Triangles, that was a... Good episode, but rough, you it know. Was very rough, yep. And so, um, Rocket Man was good, but still, even that his story is, you know, Long. sad. He's old man right. now. He's got a lot of history. <laughs> exactly. So next, so, so like the uh, July Fourth, we'll have just a fun, shorter episode for you. Also, I'm going on my honeymoon in July, so you're excited. I am excited. We're going to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. I do uh, love Philly. A lot of great, great queer history in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm excited. So yeah, I'm excited about that. We're in. Okay, I'm good. It's looking for the strings to my drawers. Trying to undress over here. That's right. <clears throat> Today is a happy day in queer U.S. history. On June 26, 2015, that's right, four years ago, Yep. same-sex right. marriage was federally legalized in the United States. Now, oftentimes, we hear the phrase linked, in, linked to the words marriage equality, but the truth is we're not quite there in terms of equal marriage rights for everyone. We'll discuss how and why later in this episode. But for now, we say congratulations to all the same-sex couples and queer couples who are able to finally marry their partners. And we're going to credit our main source of information right up front, the book Love Wins by Debbie Sinziper and Jim Ogerfell. Oberfell. Oberger. No, it was Oberfell. Change you were, your name. See, you know, well, you were doing great, and then you just decided to go back and fix it. You were, you said Oberfeld, and then you're Oberfeld. Well, there's, there's, a, there's an RGE that's weird. The, it, the G is silent. Well, that makes no sense. Okay. Make sure you check that out if you can. <laughs> we'll drop the reference again at the end of the episode, so let us launch into the tale of love triumphing over hate, as it always will, in the end. <clears throat> So we're going to do a little monologue. I'm going to be Jim and Al, uh, Evan is going to be Al. I almost called you Alex. Don't know why. So okay. we've been together since December 31st, 1992, and it's been my world. It's been my life. We've been in a committed relationship since that time. And in our eyes, we are married. Our families love us. Our families consider us married. Our families and friends treat us as a committed married couple. Now, you've been together and met a couple for over 20 years. Why is it so important for you to be married? Well, I think that's the same for any couple who decides to get married, no matter how long they've been together. We want our country, our state, to recognize our relationship and to say, yes, you matter. You are married. You have the rights, the benefits, and the responsibilities that go with that, just as any other couple. With John near death, it is very important to us to have our relationship formalized and recognized by our government. Well, now, I don't want to belabor this, but for the purpose of records, we need some sense of how imminent... If you know, John's passing might be. I would say days, maybe weeks if we're lucky. 
Last week, the RN with our hospice service pulled me aside after their visit with John to tell me I should start preparing because she believes the end is close. Now, there's a box, uh, number 10, where it says marriage at time of death. Did I read that correctly? Yes, you did. And if this court does not act, how will that be filled in? Unmarried. And the next box, supervising spouse's name. If this court doesn't act, how will that be filled in? It will remain blank. And how should it be filled in? James Oberfell, my name should be there, Your Honor. During our 20 years together, John and I have taken care of each other during good times and bad, for richer or poorer, and in sickness and in health. For the past two years, I have had the honor of caring for him as ALS has stolen every ability from him. Barely a day goes by that he doesn't apologize for what he feels he's done to, to me by getting sick. He is physically incapable of doing anything to thank me or, or assuage his feelings of guilt. And we all know there are times where words are not enough. We need to do something. What we want is to die knowing that I will be legally cared for and recognized as his spouse after he is gone. That would give him peace, knowing that he was able to care for me as his last thank you. When I learned that John would forever be listed as unmarried on his death certificate, nor would my name be listed as his spouse, my heart broke. John's final record as a person as a citizen of Ohio should reflect and respect our 20-year relationship in legal marriage. Not to do so is hurtful, and it is hurtful for the rest of time. So what you just heard was Jim Oberfell's statement to Ohio's District Court on July 22, 2013. He and his husband John had traveled to Maryland just a few weeks earlier in order to obtain a legal marriage license. Maryland was one of the few states at the time that had legalized same-sex marriage. Upon returning home, the spouses filed their claim with the Ohio Registry. However, they were denied as Ohio did not recognize out-of-state same-sex marriage licenses. So Jim and John had been forced to sue the state on grounds of discrimination. As is the case when one sues the state, Governor John Kasich, Kasich became the lead defendant and the case was marked Oberfell v. Kasich. The fight for marriage equality has been one of the most fundamental goals of the LGBTQ movement for the last 30 years. And really even earlier than that, if you track the individuals who filed without the backing of legal and civil rights organizations. The first gay couple to apply for a marriage license were Michael McConnell and Jack Baker on May 18, 1970 in Blue Earth County, Minnesota. The couple had been pretty clever. Jack changed his name to a gender-neutral name, Pat Lynn, and then Michael went to file for the license alone. The two men were married, and in February of 1971, they received their official notice from the Social Security office. But when the, but when the McConnells sent in their marriage license to be filed on public record, the so-called mistake was caught. The license was never recorded. Without a public rec record, proof of marriage, the couple could not collect any of the legal benefits. Yeah, so it was actually pretty, uh, That's I guess pretty it was clever. clever. Yeah, he's, the, just, he's just like, well, I'll just change my name. And the clerk yeah. just like, you know, filed it, took it, and was like, okay, whatever. Like, he doesn't, uh, mm -hmm. you know, realize. And then when they send it in, they're like, oh, okay. And they're like, uh, wait a minute. Oh, here. don't you know, you think you two boys can get married, <laughs> eh? <laughs> So, soon news of two homos trying to wed ignited a firestorm across the country. Mike and Jack sued the clerk for discrimination, claiming that Minnesota law made no reference to gender in terms of marriage. The case, Baker v. Nelson, Nelson being the last name of the court clerk, made its way through the lower courts to Minnesota Supreme Court. Every judge sided with the county clerk and soon the case died. But the marriage license remained on file and would sit there for the next 45 years. And yes, Jack and Michael would remain together waiting for their license to be approved. But in the meantime, homophobes wrapped their panties in a bunch and began to crusade to ensure gay marriage was never legalized. Minnesota led the charge by declaring in 1971, the, in the institution of marriage as a union of man and woman uniquely involving the procreating and wearing of children within the family is as old as the book of Genesis. Don't you know? That's pretty good. <laughs> Maryland was the first state to make a separate official ban on same-sex marriage, declaring in 1973 that only a marriage between a man and a well, woman... This is Maryland. Oh, damn, I had a good one going, too. <laughs> oh, you could do it anyway. <laughs> Let's do the whole episode like that. Okay, well, we'll do any any bigot will be in, a, in that voice. Okay? okay, all right, that's good. Only a marriage between a man and a woman is valid in this state, don't you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> Over the next 20 years, the majority of the other 50 states would follow suit. Sorry to any queer Minnesota listeners, but we have to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should get out of that. No, it's better now. Yeah. And Adding amendments to their constitutions and clarifying phrasing to make it Im impossible for same-sex couples to marry because of the limited visibility and freedoms of transgender individuals, meaning the inability to change their assigned gender at birth on their legal records, many trans people face the same issues. Across the country, uh, across the country while laws criminalizing homosexuality dropped, laws prohibiting marriage sprung up in their place. So, so it's just a continuing mm -hmm. yeah. way to make sure that, oh, no, no, we're being more progressive towards the gays, but you still, but now we're going to make sure that you don't think you're getting too ahead to where you can be equal with us. Exactly, right? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's just, yeah, exactly that. Like, we'll, we'll let you have sex with each other, but don't think that you can get married now. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, like, when we're saying same-sex marriage, uh, this also applies to trans couples, like I said, because uh, most trans people... Queer marriage. Queer marriage, yeah, because most trans people, if you were, like, for instance, me with Samantha in fucking Rhode Island in 2019, I still had to put my assigned uh, birth, my assigned gender at birth on my marriage license. So I couldn't put my real gender on my marriage license. I had to put my assigned uh, gender. And because of that... If if gay marriage wasn't legalized, I wouldn't be allowed to get married. Right. So I mean, so obviously this was affecting trans individuals. So we mm -hmm. say queer marriage, but I put same sex because that's you know, what's more that, uh, widely yeah, known. Yeah, that's as. what's more widely known as, and you know. Hey, Christians! Today's episode is brought to you by Honey, the incredible browser extension. Honey searches the web for you and automatically applies the best coupons to your order. I have personally saved a ton of money using this extension. When we upgraded our audio equipment, we saved around $20. That was just one purchase. The average Honey user saves $30. How could Honey be any better, you ask? Honey now offers exclusive coupons for the Your Queer Story merch shop. So make sure you check it out while you shop for your new swag. To learn more, visit yourqueerstory.com slash honey. Again, that's yourqueerstory.com slash honey. So in 1984, the crusade to save marriage was thrown off was thrown off by one of the most beautiful love stories we've ever told. In November of 1983, Sharon Kowalski was headed home one evening to her partner of four years, Karen Thompson. The two women had little way for their relationship to be legally recognized. Civil unions were not yet granted to queer couples, and of course, marriage equality was decades away. However, the women had a commitment ceremony on December 17, 1979, and exchanged wedding rings. They also were able to make each other their insurance beneficiaries. So on this evening, Sharon headed home to her wife, even though the state only saw them as roommates. But before she arrived, she was struck by a drunk driver. No, that's my biggest fear. Yeah, right. After several days in a coma, the doctors pronounced that Sharon had brain damage. She would remain in a wheelchair the rest of her life and have the mental capacity of a four to six year old. Karen immediately petitioned the state to allow her to be Sharon's guardian. Sharon's father, Donald, who claimed he had no idea that Sharon was a lesbian, had no idea. I thought oh, she yeah. was just, what? they were just roommates. They just good friends. They were just good Old friends children. living together. <laughs> so uh, he actually peti petitioned for custody of her as well. Donald was awarded custody, but Karen was to retain some visitation rights. This is why it matters. Yep. However, in 1985, Donald cut Karen off and refused to let her see her wife, Sharon. The Kowalskis even got a physician to write a court letter saying, visits by Karen Thompson at this time would expose Sharon Kowalski to a high risk of sexual abuse. Right. This is why it matters. <laughs> we don't want it just so that we're as miserable as everybody else. Yeah, right? It's exactly this. It's so disgusting. And it's like, oh, not but it's just like she loves this woman. They're married as much as they can be. And um, to, to write in and say that Karen is going to sexually uh, abuse Sharon, like, yeah. So, I mean, it's so incredibly insulting to say that Karen's going to sexually assault Sharon, completely invalidate their, completely ignore that they're a couple, invalidate their relationship, and then have a physician write this letter. And, it, and like you said, it's what matters. It's like that show Bridegroom, which is also on Netflix, and you really should check out if you want something. And it, I didn't have a chance to add that story into the script, but it's a similar thing where a man watches his fiance die 
and um, he's not even allowed to go to the funeral. Yeah, you know? the family tells him if he goes to the funeral, they'll call the police. Or yeah, or there's like people whole, standing outside threatening to beat oh, yeah, him up. beat his ass. Yeah, yeah, like it's that that incredible stuff. That's why it matters. Mm-hmm. So the story of a lesbian woman fighting for custody of her disabled lover soon swept the country. For the next seven years, Karen would fight for her right to be in Sharon's life. Her story especially moved a community heavy in the throes of the AIDS epidemic. All across the country, queer individuals were watching their partners die. And and often after this devastating loss, they were then faced with the reality that they had no say in their loved one's possessions, burial, or legacy. The story of a lesbian fighting for her marriage to be seen pulled at their hearts. Cities began to host National Free Sharon Kowalski Day. LGBTQ organizations, including Lamba Legal, rallied around Karen. Tom Stoddard of the gay law organization Lamba Legal said of the case, Karen's case, touched, Karen's case has touched the deepest nerve of the gay community across the United States because it triggers the two deepest fears of every gay person, a fight among loved ones and denial of personal wishes. Karen and Sharon were making people realize the issues of denying same-sex partners the same benefits as other couples. As Karen Thompson and Michael McConnell and Jack Baker fought on, others were joining in in the March for Marriage Equality. Berkeley, California became the first city to extend domestic partnerships to to same-sex couples. On October 10, 1987, queer individuals literally marched on Washington Hall. 2,000 same-sex couples got married in the largest mass wedding in American history. By 1992, several several private businesses were beginning to extend spousal benefits to queer couples who had been in long-term relationships. During this time, Evan Wolfson, a young Harvard graduate who was working at Lambda Legal, was requested to assist on a case in Hawaii. Yeah, so and um, this will be one of our resources at the end, but there's a documentary on Netflix called Freedom to Marry, and it's about Evan Wolfson who um, has been called like the godfather of the gay rights movement. Like he's the person who stood with it the most. And we talk about it in a second, but when Evan Wolfson was talking about gay marriage in the 1980s, people, including those in the gay community, would literally laugh at him and tell him he was nuts. You're ridiculous. Mm -hmm. There's no way that will ever happen. Here we are today. Here we are today. And you know what's crazy about the fact that he had to go to Hawaii for a case on same-sex marriage? Yeah. Native Hawaiian culture before the United States took over had no problem with homosexuality. Right. Then the white man and Christianity come in, mm-hmm. and now you have a person coming in to fucking fight for same-sex marriage and equality. That, to get, like, you, to get in, you back the rights you already had yeah, before colonialism. Before, yeah, literally. <laughs> it's incredible. It's ridiculous. It's, it's. I mean, the same thing as we talked about when we talked about our Two-Spirit mm-hmm. episode where yep. Native and Indigenous people... You know, they most of them had same what would be considered same sex marriage. Right. It was you know, totally di- like the same exact thing. Like gender wasn't something they thought about. Like how yeah. we everybody's like so definitive and like like they just were. Yeah. And like it, I mean, they had their categories like two spirit and this and that. But, but it wasn't like, binary like ours. Right. Is. It was just you are who you are, and like that's it. Like you woke up, then yeah, that's how you are. Cool. Like no question. Exactly. But yeah, here we are. Although, I, and it's really cool to me that in 1987, 2,000 couples marched and were just like, that we're would, getting fucking married. I would love that. <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh, yeah. That would have been us in the late 80s, for sure. Yep. We're like, oh, no, we're fucking getting married right here, right in front of we're all of you. It. We're doing yeah. it. Yeah. And not all the, the sodomy laws were even repealed yet. Imagine so. the party, the, the after party, because you know they all oh went out God. afterwards. <laughs> there was probably, you know they there was like, there had to have been some kind of gay district or something or some secret gay bar or something somewhere. And you know yeah. they were fucking flooded. Oh, I'm sure they were. I mean, this is the 80s. So by now you could be a little, a little more open and it's the late eighties, but yeah, I'm still sure, not as much though. No, 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 I'm not, I don't think it was safe, but I mean, at least like in Washington, you know, you could go to some places, but I'm sure, I'm sure there was a lot. I, you know, I didn't get into it. A lot of sin happened that night. Let me tell you. A lot of sin happened they that night for Jesus sure. Off. The, the parks were full of people fucking <laughs> so Nina bear and Janora Denzel. Uh, D-A-N-C-E-L, along with two other couples, were suing the state of Hawaii for the right to marry. With Evan's help, Evan Wolfson, not me, (laughs) they crafted an argument that caused the Hawaii Supreme Court to rule that marriage discrimination was now unconstitutional. This seemed like a massive win for gay rights, setting a precedent that could be used in the rest of the 49 states. Evan Wolfson Wolfson was incredibly encouraged. He had been speaking out and working for marriage equality since his third year in law school. 
While most people had laughed at him and others had argued it just wasn't the right time, Evan had continued to work towards victory. He thought that Hawaii's ruling was just the break needed. He was further encouraged when an appeals court upheld the ruling in 1996 in a landmark ruling. <laughs> Sadly, the victories wouldn't last for long. Anti-gay opponents began to launch a fear campaign in Hawaii and other states because mm -hmm. what, what sells better than sex? Fear. Exactly. They funneled millions of dollars into false propaganda, which drove which drove up the hysteria against LGBTQ communities. So a lot of this stuff, the narratives that we even hear today about how, you know, like the, it's the old narratives that, you know, homosexuals are pedophiles, right? Mm -hmm. But like because you if that's stuck in your head, it's because of, of moments like this where right. this fear propaganda is funneled in. What can in. we say to make sure that these people don't get equality to us because fuck them? Uh, how about we say that they're pedophiles? Exactly. Exactly. And you know who, who came up with that? Who? The churches. Oh, yeah. Of course, who the churches. Who were themselves pedophile. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. We get in a little later about the Vatican coming out and, and launching a full out um, Oh, but that's the thing. That's campaign. the thing in Alabama, right? If the church. Yeah. So. Don't know if anybody's heard the church, the the state of Alabama, who has been fucking going full on hands made. Alabama tale. just needs to be fucking cut out of the country Literally, at this just point. Just them, cut them out and let them float out the sea. Just put them with Iran because that's exactly who they if are. You're right living now. in Alabama. Get out now. So Alabama just passed a law that said churches can have their own police force with the exact same authority as the regular police force, and they do not have to answer to the regular police force. So therefore, the church can hide any cases that they want to hide because mm -hmm. they are investigated by their own police force. Exactly. So therefore, the church can just rape and fuck as many kids as they want and then they can turn around and kill any gay people that come in there and it's all fucking legal. Yep. It's, yeah, it's like Paul says. It's the handmaid's tale, folks. It's the handmaid's tale. I, I was telling the Paul. The handmaid's tale in the, the, mo the show actually started in one state. Yeah. And then it spread. I think then it was it one state. I could be completely wrong, but I feel like it was one state. And then it spreads, and then, like, another state takes over. And then eventually they have their own government that overthrows the United States government. Yeah, Gilead. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, it's um, like... people, open your eyes, please. This is what we've been the fuck talking up. about. This is what I was telling Paul before the show, because everyone's always getting on to me for not watching The Handmaid's Tale, because I watched the first season, and I was done, because I lived The Handmaid's Tale to an extent, but I know how real it is. I know that there are people that literally want to do these things. Like, people think it's too extreme and it couldn't happen but I grew up with those teachings this is what people want this is what they're going to do if the, they get a chance the people in your cult your ex cult literally dressed like the people in The Handmaid's Tale know, like they right? would come into the store in their skirts like literally the full on outfits like right? same thing wouldn't be The Handmaid's outfits but like yeah, all the other just outfits. a long flowing yep. modesty that you know just all the fucking bullshit you have to submit the to your husband the superiority complex this, where oh. they're like yeah, and they have that look in their mm -hmm. eyes. Yeah, right. They think they they've got all the answers. They've got it right. They what? They're high on God. It's like a fucking drug. It is a drug. It literally is a drug. Mm -hmm. It's like it's been proven that like your re brain reacts on religion, like people react on drugs. That's why like, their eyes always look that that like yeah that distant like fucking space that look. Okay, pay attention, people. <laughs> if you're out and you see someone with big wide open eyes, this weird awkwardly placed smile, <laughs> this glossy look in their eyes, and they're staring off. They're either on heroin or God. That's right. Heroin or God. And what's the difference? We don't know. One's illegal and one's not. <laughs> so anyway, so we're back to they funneled millions of dollars. That's you. Where's that at? They, they funneled millions of dollars into false propaganda. Where's that at? <laughs> and at, sadly, the victories wouldn't last for long. We're still in the oh, middle of that okay. paragraph. <laughs> so back to the script. They funneled millions of dollars into false propaganda, which drove up hysteria against LGBTQ communities. The movement had been making great progress in the early 90s. Karen Thompson had even been awarded guardianship of her wife Sharon in 1991. The court's decision came on December 17th, exactly 12 years after Karen and Sharon had wed. 12 years, people. That she was separated from her wife. Well, no, she was separated from her for seven years. They got married in 79. Oh, and then okay. Well, yeah, 12, 12 years. They were married. She was, was separated all, yeah. for seven years. Imagine that. Like yeah. fighting just to be with the person, just that you to be with the married. person that you want, and 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 it's just like it, she, her story. What it did was it just invalidated all this shit about how um, queer people is just about sex and their deviant lifestyle. She's fighting for her wife who's in a wheelchair, severely disabled. It's not there's there's nothing like there's no sex. This is just right. love. This is love and taking care of her and just being yeah. by her side and, and having her with you. Exactly and like the companionship and the love. Like yeah. 
She just wanted to fulfill her vows. She had promised that she would take care of her till the day they died, and that's mm-hmm. what she was trying to do. Yep. So to this day, Karen still takes care of Sharon, though Karen has re- though Karen has remarried. But while that victory and Hawaii's ruling had been the spark of light, they were quickly extinguished. On May 12, 1995, the Sixth Court of Appeals ruled that it was permissible for the state government to discriminate against LGBTQ people. The following year, 1996, an election year, President Bill Clinton came out in opposition of gay marriage. He told the advocate, I remain opposed to same-sex marriage. I believe marriage is an institution of the union of a man and a woman. Don't ask about Monica Lewinsky. (laughs) She was sucking my dick, but I'm faithful to my wife. This has been a long-standing position, and this is not being reviewed or considered. That wasn't very great. I no, late I earlier. Good. Well, earlier I had a really good one. I was doing really good, but you know, too many accents gets me too too mm. confused. <laughs> <laughs> so that same year, anti-gay opponents pushed through DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act, which described marriage as between a man and a woman, and banned same-sex marriage on a federal level. Clinton promptly signed the bill into law on September twenty-first. What did I put here? 1996. It says 2,996. We're going into the future. But listen <laughs> to this. The man who's preaching about the defense of marriage and the, like how it's so uh, precious literally cheated on his wife and got his dick sucked in the White House. Yeah, exactly. He's right? like, no, marriage is so holy. You Gay people can't but, get married. Oh, no. Don't want to mess up the sanctity of marriage. And it's all shit because the very next year, he was at the HRC giving a speech about like – how we've got to fight for this. Like, come on, man. I know people are like, well, he had to get elected so that he could keep, you know, he fucking signed the in bill place. into law. No, yeah. Because of that bill being signed into law, yeah. it, puts, it put us behind so much. It did. It, I mean, it literally, like, it started 20 years yep. of fucking shit. And 20 years of shit. On top shit. of this, people, Bill Clinton, everybody thinks he was such a great Democratic president. Don't forget that he's the one who institutionalized all these prison rules yeah. and why we have such a crazy corrupt prison system right now. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, so yeah, people like to – people look on the 90s with such fondness, but it's just like people that looked on the 50s with such fondness. Like you're acting like it was so great and perfect, but it really was just really great and perfect for white straight people. Exactly. You yeah, know? maybe he left us a fucking budget – like a surplus of money, but uh, yeah. socially he fucking fucked over so many communities. Mm. Minority communities. He was great for white people. Absolutely, yeah. I can see that. Straight white people. Absolutely. Did yeah, I get why you them. love. I get why you love Clinton. Yeah, well, he fucked over these communities. But what you don't understand is that that comes back twenty years later, and now your your economy an entire is in the tank. An entire because, generation. Yeah, exactly. Your your. It's not just about the moment, fuckheads. You have to think in advance. <laughs> and I shared an article earlier um, about. Uh, did you see it? Which no. Uh, um, it was, it was an article, and it was very clickbaity towards liberals. The title was like "Millennials, like Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, won't stand for." I don't remember. Mm-hmm. It was a very clickbaity title. Yeah. But when you read the actual article, it is very valid. It was basically saying that. Oh, I think I did see that. Yeah, it was basically saying that our generation like doesn't just take America's word for it. Yeah. Like we question things. We're like, uh, no, just because we're America doesn't mean that's the right decision. Yeah. Like you have to like we don't just always make the best decisions we can fuck up just like every other country yeah. and it's basically saying like the generation before us basically took america's word for it and was like yeah america number one number one america and now our generation because we got so fucked over in every mm-hmm. single way we're like uh no how do we know that even with the iran thing with um mm-hmm. the ships being exploded or whatever yeah. the mines i was like is trump making that up like i questioned it i didn't just think like oh my god yeah. iran attacked us i was like um, how do I know that that wasn't staged or something like that? Well, the government has screwed us over and lied, straight out lied to us so many times. Like we're looking at, we're looking at where our country is right now. Mm-hmm. We cannot look at any young person and really any person, but any young person cannot look at our country right now with concentration camps where we're ripping children away from their parents. Where did you see like the, the pictures of the rosaries laying out? Yes. Yeah. It's the exact same when the, 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 the Jewish yeah. wedding. We have, we're running stuff, yeah. concentration camps. We're watching uh, black people be murdered in the streets, literally, left and right, and left murdered. and right, we dragged out of their cars while they have babies in their hands <laughs> because of a gunpoint. because of a ninety nine 
nine cent doll. Like we're watching or this, laying on the street, hands in their above their head, literally laying on the street, and they still get slaughtered. And still getting shot. Yeah. What were they shooting? How was that self defense? What were they defending yeah. themselves against? He had a air? gun. You didn't know that he had a gun. He was probably going to reach it, reach for it. Yeah. We're watching this left and right. We're watching. We've watched. We've watched what the private prisons have done. We see in our own. Did you see Elizabeth Warren vowed to outlaw private prisons? If she yeah, I did. Them? Yeah. She's my new candidate. Yeah, because fucking Elizabeth Warren, every single issue, she's like, I'm going to address that. And she Here's what I'm going to do full, for that. Yeah, she has a full fucking. She's like, here, you can download my 62 PD- page PDF There's, file that details where every single source of income yeah. is going to come from. Her her thing is I have a plan for that. And she does have a fucking plan for that. So if you want America to be fixed, then go for her. And, and if you want warm, fizzy, fuzzy feelings, then go for fucking someone else. She um, also talked about making all community college free. I would go mm-hmm. back to school. Which, been exactly, thinking, which been she's thinking. been talking about for years, by the way. Most of these are plans that Elizabeth Warren has been talking about for years. These are not election plans like goddamn Bill Clinton running and deciding that he's going to outlaw gay marriage. Right. Like, these are real plans that she has been talking about for years, some of them a decade. And I she would plans go back to, to college, place. 100%. Yeah. Imagine I, what that would do for our economy if we were able to re-educate people through free entire, college. If an entire generation who didn't go to college because it was going to put them $100,000 in debt suddenly yeah. went back to college... I would go for cybersecurity. Yeah. Like other people would go for engineering. All kinds uh, of things. Doctor stuff. Like anything. Like imagine that. What like a cybersecurity do you agree could do for me? Uh, exactly. What, could, what I could do for a company. What Like I could work for the government. Like Imagine how we could just revitalize our economy our and our education country. system. Our, med- our medicine. Everything. We're way off on a tangent. Where was any of this? The point is. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We get really um, excited about Our point is stuff. we're tired of being lied to by the government and screwed over every time there's a goddamn election season. So now it's you following the ruling. <laughs> Where is that? Oh, following the ruling. <laughs> Back to the script, everyone. <laughs> following the ruling, an amendment banning same-sex marriage was put on the ballot for Hawaii's 1998 election. The citizens of the Aloha state voted in favor of the amendment, and LGBTQ Hawaiians were once again forbidden to marry. Alaska, along with other states, would follow suit. Eventually, 31 of the 50 states would add amendments that prohibited same-sex marriage. While several states, such as Vermont, allowed queer couples to receive domestic partnerships, the amendments further ensured that queer couples could never have their relationships equally recognized. Yeah. It was, it's, it's such the whole, we're not going to get into every time it goes back and forth. We can't, it's too much because it was a roller coaster. And so for those couples out there that were going through this, we're sorry for you. Congratulations. Because yeah. that would have, oh I don't, I feel like I would have had anxiety every day waiting for the next news headline. Right. You never know. Literally. It was like, it was just two steps forward, 10 steps back. One step Even forward, now with the three Trump administration, back. like Obama just passed so much shit. Yeah. I'm scared. I'm like, is Trump going to fucking. For healthcare. Yeah. That's what, exactly not even what just Trump's healthcare, doing. Like, Marriage in stuff, general, he yeah. could even he could do something. He, he could, could try to with back. his party. He, he could. He put could Kavanaugh re- in. Kavanaugh. Yeah. Who knows? Kavanaugh in. Yeah, he he could revert it back to um, state level. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's what I mean. It's just it was just like de- decades of this just ha- over and over. And every time you thought you caught a break, you lose it. Mm-hmm. You know, Evan Wolfson was not a man to be beaten. By now, he had earned the earned the nickname the Paul Revere of gay marriage. Wolfson began organizing various groups around a single goal titled the Marriage Resolution. He joined forces with attorney Mary Bonato, and together they went on an all-out campaign for marriage equality. While one state after another was slamming the door on gay marriage, Evan and Mary refused to back down. They were somewhat encouraged by the events happening around the world. In 2001, the Netherlands became the first country to legalize same-sex marriage. By 2003, several other countries and regions around the world had legalized same-sex marriage or civil unions with the equivalent status of marriage. That same year, Evan Wolfson, Mary Bonato, Bonato, and several others launched the Freedom to Marry Foundation with a $2.5 million grant. Wolfson started in his, stated in his blueprint for Freedom to Marry. Shimmering within our reach is a legal structure of respect, inclusion, equality, and enlarged possibilities, including the freedom to marry. Let us build the new approach, partnership, tools, and entities that can reach the middle, bring it all home. The plan was simple. Don't go for a federal appeal. Instead, win enough states and hearts and minds along the way that the United States government has no choice but to grant federal approval. Yeah, so what uh, Wolfson realized is that if he just went and tried to get it, um, it repealed or tried to get it passed to the uh, um, 
the Senate or the House, it wasn't going to happen, you know, um, through Congress. It wasn't going to happen. So he went. It was a very much a methodical. Let's go state by state. And it wasn't just let's let's win it in, on the books. It was let's win the community. And this is why, if you can, that's why it's so important for to come out. It's like he would go to people and he would challenge them. I want you to talk to three to five people this week about what marriage equality um, means to you. Mm-hmm. Because so many of these queer couples had friends who were straight, but they had never once talked about marriage. Right. And so because they were shy, scared. Exactly. You know they. You don't want to be rejected. You don't want to hear what your friends really have to say, right? And um, sorry, I know you're in the middle of something, but in response to this, um, where are these people from? I'm in a. I play a lot of games. I might have talked about this on the last episode. I don't think you talked about it. You told me, but yeah. So I play a game, and for any gamers, there's this app called Discord. If you don't know what Discord is, if you're not a gamer, it's basically like imagine MSN Messenger, right? But it's for gamers. Mm. So there's like a big group chat, basically. And I, I've been in this group of people for a while. We were playing game. We've been playing games together and I just never really, you know, it never came up that I was gay. Um, not that I ever hide it. It's just like we were playing this game together. That's not really a topic that came up. They never talked about their partners. I, you know, it was just we're friends, mm-hmm. virtual friends. Um, and then one day I just happened to be like I glanced at the chat and they're like, I think they're Ecuador. They're in Ecuador. Mm hmm. And they said, yeah, marriage equality was just passed, but I don't know how I'm going to uh, explain that to my child. Like, what? how, how am I going to explain that to them? I don't really know. And I was like, well, uh, what do you have to explain? They're <laughs> like, it's just weird. How do you explain that? I'm like, what's weird about it? Like, you married who you loved and these people are going to marry who they love. Yeah, but I don't know, blah, blah, blah. So I, it took me, you know, we went back and forth for about 40 minutes and they were getting frustrated and I just remained calm and I just explained to them like, we're equal people like i don't understand how you can say you support the queer community and you have no problem with queer people but you think it's weird explaining to a child that two same sex or two queer people can get married and eventually like two days later i got a private message from a couple of them that were like hey you know what we really thought about what you were saying thank you for sharing that i really don't have any issue with any you know queer person um, and you open my eyes to some issues that I previously hadn't understood before. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like Evan Wolf, Wolfson, Wolfson yeah. and Evan Jones <laughs> was just covering Evan Wolfson talking about you have to talk to people because if they have never yeah. been exposed to it, if they don't have that foundation, they don't know. They don't understand how it's a big deal because to yeah. them, they've never had to question it. Exactly. It really is. It, it, I mean, it matters. When people started talking and saying, hey, it matters to me that I get to be married. And why are you trying? How are you calling yourself my friend or my, you know, you, you're my family member. You're saying you love me, but you don't want me to have equal rights. That's that's hurtful to me. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing like the trans community coming visible, which is hard to be visible as a trans person. But it's also if you don't come forward and say, hey, um, the government's stripping away my medic, my Medicare, like it's stripping away my medical rights. It's mm-hmm. letting doctors discriminate against me. Like I could be in a, an emergency room in Alabama and a doctor can refuse to treat me right, because I'm die. trans and I could, you know, like that matters to me, you know. So when you're talking, if you can come forward, these conversations. I believe go a lot further than laws and that's what Wolfson understood he's like we can make these laws but if we don't change the hearts and minds we're going to forever be in this loop, it's gonna be a loop yeah. a back and forth and back and forth and that's why and when this started like the majority of Americans believed that um, gay marriage was wrong and should not be passed so despite an increasing uphill battle freedom to marry charged forward as an anti-gay marriage amendment was introduced to Congress, which would forever alter the uh, U.S. Constitution. So we had the law, but the amendment had not been in place. An amendment is a much bigger deal than a law. Yep. Evan had it to Massachusetts. In June of 2003, the Supreme Court struck down the sodomy laws. In July, the Vatican began a campaign against same-sex marriage. Of course they fucking did, mm-hmm. you fucking hypocrites. In August, a poll was released which showed that most Americans opposed same-sex marriage. In October, and again, we're still just in 2003, Mm -hmm. President George W. Bush came out against gay marriage. But on November 18th, in the case of Goodrich versus the Department of Health, the Massachusetts Supreme Court ruled in favor of same-sex marriage. And things are going to start going off after this. By 2004, just one year later, a new poll showed the support for same-sex marriage increased. However, 59% of all of the public still supported an amendment that banned same-sex marriage. Imagine that. 
seeing just living and seeing that 59 percent of people think that you should not be allowed to get married yeah <laughs> you if you're straight have never had to like think about that no. think about 59 percent of the country saying that because you are who you are you don't deserve equality yeah exactly and it was higher the year before um later that year new york and seattle ruled in favor of same-sex marriage and the amendment began and the amendment to ban gay marriage failed in the senate but consequently, Missouri, Oregon, and California all struck down measurements for marriage equality. By the end of 2004, 11 states had set bans on same-sex marriage. In 2005, Canada voted in favor of marriage equality, while states in America, especially California, were in the throes of constant upheaval. It seemed that every time one state would legalize marriage equality, three would ban it. Yeah, I actually had a friend who went to Canada and got married during this time. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, she would. I mean, they didn't stay together, oh. but it was cute. No, they were married <laughs> for several years, and you know, she's with someone else. She's happy, but yeah, it was. She didn't have a lot of uh, options, and so she went up to Canada and she got married. You know, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people did that during that time. So, but of course, you've got to put in because we're not putting it, putting in here enough. Is like one of the big problems was if you would get married, say in Canada, or if you got married in Massachusetts, which a lot of people were going there, it wasn't recognized in other states. So as soon as you went back home, or if you had to move at any point in your life, right, yep. all of a sudden, all your benefits are gone. Mm -hmm. If you have children that you've adopted together, you don't have custody of your children anymore. Like these were huge things that were, that was a big reason why it was yeah, important. It's not just the, oh, you want to be as miserable as everybody oh else. Oh my God, <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's why people, when they say, well, it's a state's rights issue. Well, well we're one fucking country. And if I can't move to another country, state in the country that's kind of a problem for i don't me. understand how equality is a state's right issue either yeah that's i don't <laughs> understand I, I i like yeah either it's equal either we're equal or not like shut the fuck up with this shit mm -hmm. so for the next 10 years the nation would be a yo-yo of marriage bans approvals vetoes and dropped bills like there was one like california especially i don't know how anybody in california survived like there was so many times that it would come through and it would be banned like there was one time where like it was passed and it was mm -hmm. set and then arnold schwarzenegger uh like uh he can't he vetoed it like of course we know proposition eight where yeah. ellen was married and then she wasn't married and it's just like for like the whole 10 years california was just constant so, okay. <laughs> on June 26, 2013, in the United States versus Windsor, the Supreme Court struck down DOMA, which was the biggest, um, it was the biggest hindrance because every time a state would really get far, they would come forward with DOMA and say, well, you can't really federally legalize yeah. it. So, while over 30 states had now legalized marriage equality, there were still a few holdouts. During this time, Jim and John Oberfeld got married in, I'm supposed to say Maryland, in 2013 before returning home to Ohio. A few weeks later, as John lay on his deathbed, Jim headed to court to ensure his husband would not die, declared a single man. When the Oberfell's request was denied, the case headed towards the U.S. Supreme Court. And along the way, Evan Wolfson and his team picked up several other cases across the U.S. Henry v. Wimelslow, Love v. Bishar, Love v. Bishar, Bork v. Bishar, I don't know, they were both in Kentucky, and Taco v. Haslam. The high court consolidated these cases with another, DeBoer v. Snyder, which was a lesbian couple suing the state of Michigan for adoption rights. Mm -hmm. Oral arguments were heard on April 28, 2015, with the plaintiffs represented by Mary Bonatu and Douglas Hallward Dremere. In a 5-4 decision, the United States Supreme Court legalized same-sex marriage on June 26, 2015. Now think about that if Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh had been in there at the time. Yep. Think about that's why Supreme Court justice nominations matter. Mm -hmm. Because this was a 5-4. to four. It could have been a 4-5. to five. Yep. It could have been flipped around and we would still be in the same shithole we were in at the time. Yep. So, um, ironically, the date was the second anniversary of the court's strike down of DOMA and the 12th anniversary of Lawrence v. Texas, which repealed the sodomy laws. June 26th is a true day in queer history. Yes, it's, a, it's an incredible day. Three huge wins um, for the queer community on June 26th, which happens to be my mother's birthday. I'm sure she loves that. <laughs> you should 
<laughs> like email her or something every year and be like, happy queer day. <laughs> happy queer day. I was actually went to church with her the night because it was her birthday. And that's, of course, what she wanted. This was four years ago. She wanted me to go to church with her. And it was a night that, you know, queer marriage was legalized. And uh, she's, you know, it's a very awkward service. <laughs> actually, no, it, it was the night that Domo was repealed. It wasn't mm-hmm. the night that because when great gay marriage was legalized, I was living in Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. So it was the night that Domo was repealed. It was a very awkward service. I remember service. the night that... that- I Gay marriage was legalized. Yeah, yeah, I remember. You won a contest and everything. I, I did. I won a t- wet t-shirt contest. <laughs> I only remember very brief parts. And you didn't get your money. No, I did it because I was too drunk to collect my money. <laughs> 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 it was a, it was an interesting <laughs> night to be sure. One of my last big drunks. So while we while we do want to celebrate that same sex marriage is now legal, we also want to point out that we don't have full marriage equality. There are several groups still struggling for full recognition. This includes polyamorous couples who would like to marry, and a polyamorous is very different from polygamy. Polygamy is sexist, and it is disgusting. Poly- well, I mean, in its context now, polyamory yeah. is when you know people are actually in love, and it's an equal. It's not like a yeah, man it's over not eight overpowering, women. right? Exactly. It's not. It's not centered around male power. It's just about couples being in love. Um, And also disabled individuals who usually lose most, if not all, of their benefits if they marry. So that's a big thing right now where um, disabled individuals are coming forward and they're saying, hey, you know, you're talking about marriage equality, um, you know, but that's not really fair because if if you're disabled and you get married, you don't get your benefits, but you're still disabled and you still need your fucking benefits. It's not like the money just suddenly comes out of fucking sky. It's, it's, it's back to this backwards idea that you're married now, so your spouse should be able to take care of everything. And that's just ridiculous. That might have worked in like the 50s. Well, yeah, know. it might have. But even then, you have so many extra expenses as a disabled individual. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know? So you I, need I just that. for general. Like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, back when people could live on a single payer yeah. income, but still. But still, like for most disabled people that can't work, that is their income. So that would be mm-hmm. like if we got married and the law was, well, now one of you can't work anymore. So you're not like if me and Samantha just got married and the law is like, well, okay, well, one of you can't work anymore because only one person's allowed to work and, and mm-hmm. earn an income. So that's how you have generational poverty. Exactly. Exactly. That's why a lot of disabled people stay there or they just can't get married, mm-hmm. you know. So in addition to this, there's many countries around the world that do not allow the majority of countries around the world do not allow same sex marriage and 78 still have anti sodomy laws. So we have been fortunate in our fight in America, but let's not forget those who still need us to continue fighting. So your recommended resources are Love Wins, The Lovers and Lawyers Who Fought the Landmark Case for Marriage Equality by Debbie Sinziper and Jen Overfell, and the documentary The Freedom to Marry, a bonus research Loving vs. Virginia documentary on Amazon. This was an interracial marriage case which was later cited as a precedence for same-sex marriage equality. Yeah, I didn't have time to get into that, but Loving vs. Virginia was um, its an incredible story of a white man and a black woman that were um, in love with each other in the 50s and it was illegal illegal. interracial marriage was illegal and they had to go to to the supreme court to get their marriage validated because they weren't even allowed to live together in the same house like the police literally raided their house one morning and you know told her husband that he had to get out of there he wasn't allowed to be there with his wife and their kids so um Um, so yeah. yeah check out our merch yeah, yeah, make sure you go and um, to your queer story. We have our merchandise, great merchandise. We appreciate it. We also would, re- would re- appreciate any support on Patreon. Your uh, Patreon.com slash your queer story. You can join us for as little as $1. It's a lot of fun. That's where you get to vote for the funny videos we do and other content. Yeah. You get to see some behind the scenes stuff and interact with us. And you really support the podcast that way. The podcast, yes. You support the podcast, which we pour in. We have some ideas that we want to do for the queer community, but we can only do that with the help from you guys. We're also going to be end up releasing like a detailed summary of what we spend our money on. Um, as far as like how much goes into hosting and different things. So you know where the money's going for. Like we say all the time, it doesn't go in our pockets. It goes back into our podcast or it goes into the community. Um, but yeah, and uh, follow us on social media if you want. Rate us a five, please. Yes, rating us a five would be a big help. So stay queer. Don't get a lobotomy. We love you, our allied hookers. A little succulent suck it. And our proud homocrats. A little succulent savage. Whatever, you sodomites. Bye. Bye.